Hello. <clears throat> Hello. My name is Hudson Waddles. I am a sophomore at uh, UW Eau Claire in Wisconsin. And as of right now, I am in Japan. I will be studying abroad for this semester um, as part of my neuroscience degree, knocking out a lot of my general ed courses. And this will be kind of a video, not diary or log, but kind of daily, weekly-ish entries on how my time here is going and what might be um, maybe if someone is trying to go, come to Japan in the future, if someone is trying to figure out whether or not studying abroad is right for them or whichever you know, they, they so choose. But this is going to be kind of my way of keeping track of all the things that I've done, how I've done it, and what I will be doing. So in the very, very beginning, I started this process uh, in my freshman year during the winter. And that was when I started making decisions and started kind of planning out where I was going to go. This process is not super difficult, but there are a lot of steps. So first I had to get up approved by uh, my school in order to actually go through with the rest of the process. I had to be accepted into the program. Then my school submitted my form and my application to uh, Kansai Gadai University, which is where I am now. And they told me that I was then able to apply. So I had to apply, to apply, to apply. And then I did, got accepted. And that took, that was another long process. That was another uh, couple months of just waiting for something to happen. Then my, uh, when it came time to that, I had to get through more stuff for the government related, like more Japanese kind of related processes. And then I was accepted by the Japanese government, which is when I started looking for stuff for a passport. Passports are not super complicated. You have to apply to get them obviously, but then your country, your designated country, will have their own set of rules for that. The U.S. is very, actually, pretty simple. It just took a little bit to get it, that's all. After I got my passport, I was I sent it away again to get a, um, with something else that Japan had sent me. The government that had accepted me there sent a certificate of eligibility, which was um, another application to apply for a student visa. So that's why I had my Certificate of Eligibility, or COE as it was referred to all the time, then my passport, a couple of the documents, mostly COVID related or kind of more green lights from Kansai and Eau Claire. I was sent it to where the closest for me was a embassy for Japan in Chicago. And I sent it there, it took three days, which was super nice. And they sent me back my student visa with no issue. They took all the other paperwork too. So they sent you back your, they send you back your certificate of eligibility. They take all the rest of the forms, but you keep your passport, the COE, and then they give you your visa. All the other things are more app, app, application based. So after I had that, then I was good to buy a ticket. And for my, specifically for me, because I'm gonna be here for about five months, I will be here through September, um, August, November, December, <laughs> August, September, November, October, switch those two, October, November, December, and I will be there, I'll be here for those five months. And uh, Japan would really like to know like everything. So if you have plans to, or first of all, I'm not going to be getting a part-time job here. I worked, um, I worked all the time during the summer to pay for this. And it's, uh, in its entirety, I only paid about $473 to actually go here. That's how much you had to pay Kansai. That is all the forms that I have gotten so far. I will let you know, you guys, whoever decides to listen to this, this is going to end up on YouTube, I, I guess. Um, 
I will let I will submit to this uh, if any of those forms change, and I'll let you know if any of those fees go up. But as of right now, uh, only four hundred dollars, almost five hundred dollars, because I'm just how inexpensive it is in comparison to American universities. And for the grand total for U.S., I had to pay my uh, I had to pay nine thousand dollars to my homeschool to pay um, to let them let me come here. So it comes out to be about three thousand. It's actually projected to be about fifteen thousand dollars in its entirety, but the primary funds and expenses all go towards UW Eau Claire. So if that's a deciding factor in what school you choose to go to to begin with or how you want to proceed with uh, actually going and studying abroad, the country that you end up going to would, I, I imagine, be cheaper. That's how it was in my experience. But specifically for Japan, it was cheaper than, it was far cry cheaper than uh, an American studio, studio, university. But... In its entirety, the process to get here is not that bad. It's just a lot of steps. They will tell you everything you need, should you need to look for it. You can always ask questions. Everyone that I talk to in order to actually get here, I, people at the embassy, the people from Japan, uh, Kansai Gadai, they are all really, really, really forward and really helpful in asking questions. Uh, the one thing I did have trouble was with on the airplane coming here to like actually to arrive at Kansai, which I wasn't aware of. There's a bus system that shows up around the clock and then leaves at different intervals to collect students from all over the world. Uh, on my first day was yesterday. That's not true. My first day is today. And I showed up yesterday at around noon and I had that much time to get accustomed to and unpack. Um, but the bus itself runs regularly so you're not pressed for a time to ride uh, for a ride to get here it took about an hour and a half to get here from Kansai International Airport KIX if you're looking on the map and it took moments outside of the gate to find them they had signs and everything they were waiting for us I had my name on a list and they got me on a bus within the half hour within the half hour is actually able to convert money so if you're worrying about that there are First of all, they take most of the shops that I've been to so far take card, which is good. Also, I have only been to a couple of shops, but all of them have taken card. I've been able to buy groceries. I've been able to buy uh, a SIM card. I've been able to convert cash. I have a little bitty, I have some cash here. Um, it comes in dollars, the it comes in bills and in coins. The hundred uh, ten thousand dollar yen for bill that I grabbed at the airport has gotten me through this I was able to buy four meals I have four meals a big thing of water and uh, another drink on the side like a little small soft drink with only about 1070 ish yen which converts to roughly about ten dollars so the yen is it's a little smaller in comparison to the dollar. It's roughly a penny, roughly. Um, this an easy way to convert it. I have is if you have a, a dollar amount in yen, you have one zero zero zero, so a thousand yen. Take off the last two zeros and make it twenty five percent off, and you have about a dollar amount, which is super nice. It's a very quick, real easy conversion method. Um, this episode might be a little longer than I anticipated because there's a lot. There's a lot that I did. Um, um, in terms of flights, coming back to flights, I purchased a one-way ticket, which I was advised to do from Chicago to Osaka, Japan. And from there, I'll have the bus ticket to Hirakata City, where I am now. On my flight, I went, I took Iba Air, which was probably my best flight so far that I've taken. I've flown with places before, but never internationally. And it was just an all around general, generally pleasant experience. I paid a little extra more for legroom on the first flight. It was uh, Chicago to Taipei in Taiwan. And an extra little bit of reg legroom got me, uh, I got for 160 bucks, not including my other ticket. And the airfare itself 
it was about a thousand dollars but I think it was worth it considering I wasn't cramped for 16 hours so but then after that I had a three four hour layover in Taipei and I got there about 4 a.m. boarded the plane at 8 30 8 o'clock I apologize 8 o'clock in Taipei and a about two hour and 50 minute flight to Osaka so very 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 simple really it was a easy to find the gate it was easy to find everything everything was clearly labeled uh, they'll use the Taipei Airport used Arabic and more Romanized characters so I wasn't struggling with Chinese language but everything that I, I went through was very simple in, uh, in relation to airport at least everything else has been complicated so far but this semester I'll be taking uh, five classes should I get all of them that I want I will have a mandatory Japanese class I will have uh, two history classes one of them medieval Jap Japan and the other one more folklore and like monsters and stuff so mythology but not title of the mythology if that makes sense and then I have a cooking class a global not a global food an eastern cuisine class and then an eastern medicine class which was I thought was oh, I'm probably the most excited for that one but I have had zero Japanese experience so far I have never taken a Japanese class I've never taken a Japanese course in the language and I barely know enough to be polite um, thank, I can say thank you, I can, I can say my name, but as of yet, I have yet to have an interaction where speaking English or just using gestures or just generally being patient and polite hasn't gotten me anywhere other than where I want. So, especially in the small markets around town, I can walk to a bunch of small markets or for where I am now in Yerikata City, I can get to a lot of places. I can get to a couple of food shops. I can get to a bunch of different restaurants. All of them have been incredibly nice to me so far. Granted, that is their job is like, you know, it's they're there to sell you stuff. So they will, why wouldn't they be nice to you? But I've heard stories of people being refused service because of their, you know, not Japanese. So, but so far, so good. So. I really don't know what else to go from here. This is, again, my first day. Today I bought, like I said, the four meals and... <laughs> I, didn't, I haven't had a plan for what I want to do with this. I suppose I could do a room tour, I guess. I haven't... This stuff is a mess. But, um... Uh, I have... Where you are right now, you are against a window. You can see the outside of. You can see kind of. I'll flip the screen around. Oh, I can't flip the screen around. All right, this would have been smarter to think about earlier. Hold on. Hi. Uh, there's a bed and a towel rack. There's the front door. There's my suitcases. I want. There's there's two of them inside there. There's a closet right here. There's two under bed cupboards. I have my desk here. I have a cabinet full of stuff. There's my food up there. Some small mementos that I've got from home. I've got glasses, a computer. I've got a telephone that came with the room and a small, I have a small fridge. I've gotten a couple things. These grapes that I found are, first of all, delicious, but second of all, massive. And that'll be something else that I can show, showcase. Uh, I'll have, definitely do something else on food. And in general, kind of how I've been surviving. Uh, a lot later, obviously, I'll do more stuff on food. Uh, here's my, my view, which... I have no idea what that building is. <laughs> I really don't. 
It could be anything. It could be apartments. It could be classrooms. I really don't know. But the street below is uh, directly outside. I can get to that street. It's moments in the background. And then there's the rest of the city. I don't know if that took at all because it just brightened. Well, put you back over on the ledge. But yes, so far, so good. It's. <laughs> uh, uh, there isn't really any. There's obviously things that I could explain, things I could explain better. But. Uh, as for general information, that's kind of all I have so far. So, this might be where I cut this here and just kind of take it day by day. Today will be, I'll do something else later today when my day is done. I have no idea what I'll, I'm going to do for the rest of the day, but I will probably record something else. 20 minutes is about good for a first episode, right? Yeah, it'll be fine. It'll be alright. Yeah. So, again, my name is Hudson. I'm here in Japan. This will be my Japanese experience. And I will share everything I, I learned and have, have learned and will learn on here with you guys. So, if you made it all the way through, uh, they're probably very minimal, if any, editing. Because I don't know how to edit it. I might find that out along the way, but it'll be alright. Yeah. Thanks for listening. <laughs> and I'll probably have more later. I don't know when this is going to go up, but probably do weekly. Probably have collection of daily videos in a weekly video. That sounds right. That sounds good. First episode is probably going to be the longest. But yeah, thanks for listening. And I'll see you again later.